Listen, my beloved brethren, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme that honorable name by which you are called? James 2, verses 5 through 7. Okay, this is my 2009 Chevy Cobalt. Uh, problem today is I'm getting a P0641 uh, 5 volt reference code on it. And the symptoms are it's giving me a reduced engine power warning, it's giving me stability track warning, it's um, kind of idling rough. And so. Uh, that is a short to ground code and since I just worked on the air conditioning uh, compressor clutch uh, the pressure sensor is one of the things on that circuit so I'm going to go back to that and see if I've got a short to ground condition on the wire going to the pressure sensor and that code is not or the other behaviors are not there all the time uh, but you can see the check engine light is set and uh, so but before in this window right here I was seeing uh, service uh, traction control I think and uh, engine power reduced so okay so I looked at all of the sensors that are on the 5 volt reference number one circuit and I didn't see any um, obvious short to ground conditions just looking at the sensor end of it so that means that maybe it's somewhere in the engine wiring harness and it's going to be difficult to find and given the amount of heat damage that uh, on the electrical sleeves um, the protective sleeves that house the wires I'm thinking that it's going to be probably difficult so to you know trace down the shorts in the in the engine wiring harness so what I'm going to do to break this down is I'm going to um, disconnect the circuits at the engine control module and so the six circuits that we're talking about for the P0641 code are the uh, refrigerant AC refrigerant pressure sensor, the camshaft uh, position sensor on the exhaust, the camshaft position sensor on the intake side, the fuel tank pressure sensor, um, the manifold absolute pressure or MAP sensor, and one of the accelerator pedal sensors. And so I'm going to first disconnect the ones that uh, don't have anything directly to do with running the engine and see if that makes a difference, see if I reset that code or not. And so we'll do those one at a time and see what happens. So the first thing we're going to do is take off this cover here. And to be on the safe side, um, back here in the trunk, you're going to disconnect the negative battery cable from here so that you don't have the system powered up when you're in there trying to remove renew, remove uh, connectors or uh, terminals from the connector. So this is the engine control module here. There are two... Um, connectors on it. Um, we're going to just take the top connector off here and slide this little red tab back, which may help to have a little screwdriver. And then there's a spot right here you have to push on, and you'll hear it pop, and then you'll swing this lever over like this. And then You have to kind of give it a little bit of wiggling. And it 
comes off like so. Okay, and then the little screwdriver, you just stick your little pick down in here. And then on the other side as well. And that piece. If it would cooperate, would come out of there. there like that. And then you can see the uh, various connectors in this system. And so we're going to um, back one of those out at a time. And so to get this off, the back of the connector off, we're going to pry these little tabs up here. And there's one on the bottom too. And that just comes off like this. And now I can see the wire colors after I dust them off a little bit. So I did figure out that the one on the bottom here is uh, X2. So and that is the one that I started with. Okay, and because I had a suspicion that perhaps the uh, air conditioning compressor uh, pressure sensor um, was possibly the cause of, of my issue because I just finished working on that component, um, that was the one I decided to uh, go after first. And so I figured out that the... Um, circuit in question here is number 35 and so in the count this is 33 so you go one row up from the bottom and this is terminal number 33 34 and 35 and you can see 35 is not there right now so what i did was i pushed that back and so there's a little black tab on top of that um, that you just simply raise up. You don't want to raise it too much because you can break it if you raise it too much, but just so you have a, a screwdriver, something like this, you know, the really fine uh, tip on it, and you just raise that little lever right there, and that allows this terminal to slide out the back. And so if you can see here, it's this white wire, or it's actually gray. Uh, it looks kind of white to me, but it's this one right here that I have pulled out uh, to get it to, uh, to not make contact with the pin on the, on the uh, engine control module. And so what that does is it takes that component or that leg of the circuit out and uh, so when I tried to drive the car, it worked fine. I had no problems other than, you know, the air conditioning obviously wasn't working because I had it backed out. So what that told me was that the problem lies in that circuit. And so I'm trying to figure out now where the problem is in the circuit. And the first thing that I noticed... Okay, as I traced this... Um, this bundle here, it goes, it goes back into this bundle here, and then because of where the, my wire is, the, is it ends up, I'm thinking it goes back this way through here, and as I'm following this down here, I look right there where that part of the oil filter protrusion is and there's a big cutout where the protective 
um, sleeve is broken away. And I had one other wire to the crank position sensor before that I strung this extra harness on this one because I didn't see this before. And so I'm wondering if I take that protective sleeve off of there, you can see right here, I'm not going to find a gray wire <laughs> that is got the insulation rubbed away on it, which is potentially the cause of my problem. But obviously this piece of conduit is going to need to be replaced because it's all it's not no longer protecting against this rub point right here. So I pulled this uh, this conduit here off of this. I also disconnected a number of the downstream connectors so that I could uh, get this up here to where I could work on it. There are a number of wires that are damaged here, so I'm just going to go uh, through and and cut out the damaged. Uh, part and uh, probably try to just keep them about the same length so that they're not uh, too much different than the rest of the of the thing. So when I go to put it back together, there's no problems. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do uh, to repair it, and then I'm going to put a, an abrasive sleeve over it so that if it comes back in contact with that corner again, uh, we won't have the same problem again. Okay, I have the, uh, the wiring harness bundle secured with abrasive uh, abrasion protector and uh, everything seems to be working fine. Thanks for watching.